which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than the human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May the words of Almighty God be on your mind and your lips and your hearts and worthily proclaim this holy gospel. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxygen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recorded, recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered him and said, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they came to believe in the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is he going on about? The money changers and the merchants in the temple area must have thought that Jesus was a lunatic. What's his problem? We've been doing this for many, many years. What's his deal? Turning the tables, so to speak, was a primary focus of Jesus' ministry. He continually challenged people to think differently to act differently, to think unconventionally, and to think so much bigger. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Or if you wish to be the greatest, well, then you must serve the least. Or if you wish to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? The word conventional means what is generally done or believed. Actions and attitudes are conventional because they work for most people. Jesus, though, radically challenges what he thinks is working well. Let's take morality, for example. God gave the Hebrew people, through Moses, the Ten Commandments. Don't kill don't steal, don't commit adultery, and so on. These are pretty good, right? And if everyone in this world just practiced these, it'd be a much better world. The Ten Commandments are a great moral foundation. But is that it? If so, then I imagine most of us can feel pretty satisfied 
with our moral lives. Jesus, though, turns the tables on us. First, he says, do unto others as you would have them do to you. He challenges us to think of others not as objects, not as obstacles in our way, but rather as, as people, just like you and me. The Kroger checkout clerk, for example, has feelings, wants to be acknowledged, wants to be recognized and treated not as an object, but just as another person. So does the bus driver or the guy who's asking for money at the highway exit. Do we treat others the way that we want to be treated? But even that isn't enough for Jesus. He takes us still to a higher level. In today's gospel, Jesus alludes to his suffering and, and death. Through his teaching and his example, Jesus turns the tables again, shattering what is considered conventional, and says that if you really want to live, then deny yourself in self-sacrificing love for others. If we could just let go of all the constant worrying about ourselves, our needs, our desires, and instead lose ourselves in caring about someone else, their needs, their worries, their cares, then we'll find ourselves really living. Or is that just nuts? Several years ago, I traveled with a, a group of 12 college students to the Dominican Republic for a service immersion trip. And we spent most of our time taking care of 14 severely malnourished children who lived on the, the border of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. The agency, if you want to call it that, it's very small, is run by a 24-year-old American woman and her fiancé. That's right, she's 24 and she's made a life commitment to caring for these kids. A life commitment of feeding, changing diapers, giving medicine, and a lot of crying. Did I mention changing diapers? <laughs> Why would anyone do that? Well, after one week there, none of us wanted to leave. And many from our group returned that following summer. In just a short amount of time, I think we all experienced the other side of the tables turned to see what Jesus was getting at. In less than a week's time, we all came to love those kids. and We would do anything we could for them. Around the world, we see Christians serving the poorest of the poor. Is it because they're masochists? Why would they do that? Are they gluttons for punishment? Or is it because there's something awesome in the reality of Jesus' message? that losing oneself, dying to oneself for the sake of others is the very way to salvation, or in other words, to living their life to the fullest. The alternative is to pass time in trying to live life as comfortably as possible and avoiding as much pain or hardship as possible. That's the conventional way. But Jesus says that there's so much more to living than the conventional way. Now, not all of us are called to care for starving babies in developing countries. I'm really sure that God is not calling me to a life commitment of changing diapers. Thank you, God. <laughs> but Jesus does want us to turn the tables on our conventional way of looking at life, of what's really important and what's really worthwhile. The season of Lent is this time for us to re-examine our lives and to convert, to change from one way of life towards another. How is Jesus turning the tables in your life?
Let's stand now and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God's great love and care for us. Let's bring to our God our needs and petitions. Our response is, God of mercy, hear our prayer. That the Catholic Church may guide her members in the paths of goodness and truth, bringing them closer to God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of, of mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may hear God's call to a deeper conversion, turning away from sin with all our hearts, and remaining obedient to God's law, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That those who do not believe may yet hear the word of God and be brought to eternal salvation, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That during this holy season, we may recognize the crucified Christ as the power and wisdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That we may justly use the resources of God's holy creation for the good of all God's people, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For our parishioners and friends who are joining us today via live streaming, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy eternal life through the saving actions of the crucified and risen Lord. We also remember especially all the living and deceased members of our parish today. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these in all of our prayers. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, may become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, may become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of our hearts that freed from disordered affections 
we may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was, he, he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his friends. Gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. So let's now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all our world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So let's pray now for the coming of God's kingdom in those words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom the power, the power, 
the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave with you, my peace is my gift to you. So look not on our faults and our failings, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ always be with you. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to share a sign of peace with one another. Peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worried that you should enter in my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Far 
from your love, save your people, O Lord. Let us pray. as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two announcements. One, please join us this Wednesday at St. Patrick for the third Lenten presentation offered by Father Mark Latkovic, president of Rector of Borromeo and St. Mary's Seminaries. Father, Re Father Latkovic will reflect on the call each Christian has to be formed as a missionary disciple. Presentation takes place in the church immediately following the 5.30 Mass. It should also be available at the same time on live stream on St. Patrick's site. In our effort to make the Sacrament of Reconciliation available to our parishioners, Confessions during Lent take place after the 12 noon Mass on Fridays and from 3.15 to 3.45 on Saturday afternoons. If these don't meet your needs, contact the rectory for an appointment with one of the priests. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.